actually want to ask you about the Olympics before we uh, start talking about your Republican colleagues uh, shifting this week a bit on on the vaccine. But we last talked to you about the swim caps uh, that were being banned for black girls like me with hair, with big hair. OK, um, it, it was pretty racist and gross. Um, has there been any updates on that? Has the uh, International Olympic Committee um, or anybody responded uh, to to your letter and request? Thank, but not necessarily to my letter, but there was a response. And it's a little bit too, uh, too little too late. They said they apologized for having jumped to the conclusion that they reach, uh, that they're gonna look at this uh, more closely, examine uh, whether or not there this is a reasonable request and that they would do that in September. So they said, we can't do this in time enough for this Olympics. And I disagreed with that. And you know, my response was, well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you came to the conclusion that you need to re-examine your approach and your decisions, but you really could do it because it's 2021 and those swimming caps are available. So no response directly to the letter right, Barbara like... and I sent. I know. Yeah, it's, that, it's I mean, that's, that's a little bit disappointing. And unnecessary. Um, you know, it was, it, was, it was unfortunate, unnecessary, you know, that they came to that conclusion in the first place. They had the opportunity to, to, to remedy it, but they didn't. You know, it's, it's, it, it's a sort of a response to issues that affect Black women, in particular, as we're talking now, I disproportionately just don't don't get the kind of serious consideration. And so the caucus on black women and girls, of which I'm a co-founder, we also sent another letter to the Olympics, you know, speaking to just the way black women are addressed, just some of the things that they have to experience and how how they're treated. Mm -hmm. And so there's an opportunity here for a lot of growth and fairness and, and justice and you know, I got a lot invested in, in this Olympics. I've got three Olympians from my district. I got a discus player. I got a hurt, hurdler. And I got a thing, Mo, who just whipped up the 800 meter. And, you know, and, and I'm just really proud that we have the diversity in women in so many different categories here and Black women. They show up and they function and they win under pressure. Absolutely. And I have to say, like, as someone who grew up in New Jersey and did, tra did track and field in high school in New Jersey, New Jersey, they show out in track and field. So you are right. You have three Olympians and they are all excellent um, competing in these games. So I want to pivot. I want to pivot, though, to COVID because we were we were just having a discussion at the top of the show uh, with an epidemiologist. And we were talking about the vaccine hesitancy um, that we've been seeing now to get that last third of people vaccinated. I think there are, there's different groups of and you know people who are hesitant, yeah. right? There's anti-vaxxers, and you know those are Mar the Marjorie Taylor Greene types. Black people who have legitimate and good faith questions, though, um, based in American history or distrust of the medical field, I think we need to approach them differently, um, and you know not talk to them like, "Why won't you get this vaccine? You're so stupid," because um, that's not necessarily an effective message. What do you think uh, is an effective message, or have you found an effective message when you're speaking to people who are still on the fence uh, in the black community? Uh, let me just say that I think that there's a third group. And they're not the anti-vaxxers, but they are the, you know, the proponents of the big lie. And anything anybody tells them, uh, they're, they, they follow. Mm -hmm. And they're a lot responsible for those folks not being vaccinated. As it relates to the Black community, we need a lot of investment in the infrastructure. We need a lot of trusted voices speaking to them, whether it's their clergy or their friends or their family um, or just people that they trust for one reason or another. We've got to make sure that we are outreaching and we're going where they are and going into their mm -hmm. communities, setting up, you know, opportunities to get vaccinated, maybe have a cookout to do whatever we have to do. But you're right. There are historical reasons for black folks just not trusting the system. And we have a responsibility to overcome that with them and let them see that, you know, we got vaccinated. You know who we are. We're part of this community. We need you to get vaccinated because 
I have an eight-year-old granddaughter. She's too young to get vaccinated. Mm. It, it frightens me that she right. may end up having to go to school. Uh, and there's no mask requirement for them. She, there are no vaccinations available for them. Everybody is in this together. And we've got to realize, irrespective of our politics or our, histor- our historical fears, that we are in this together. And I hope that they see that Absolutely. in addition to the vaccines, there are other things that this administration is proposing that will help make life better. I mean, just the, the, the child tax credit makes life better. Mm-hmm. Just the idea of an infrastructure creating jobs and opportunities going to make life better. Well, you got to be alive to experience that and to appreciate it. And we do everything we can, and there's more that we have to do. We need to find more people that are trusted and respected and followed for one reason or another to said, hey, get that shot in the arm so that you can have a, a shot at a better life. So we're going to get to a place where Uh, a lot of these issues are going to come to the fore. Um, And one of the other issues that's been hot right now is the January 6th commission. So you are actually somebody who during the insurrection uh, were in the holding location with the Republicans who wouldn't put their masks on and you contracted COVID. Um, But the, the additional fallout from that day is people died, people lost their lives. And a lot of people are asking, how do we prevent another attack on the Capitol? Next week, the House elect committee investigating that attack is holding its very first hearing. What are you hoping to learn from this investigation? What are the questions that you have that you hope are answered? And who do you want them to subpoena? I want to know the answer to the who, what, when, where, why, and how. I want I want to know who knew what, when. I want to know why there was such reluctance in, in beefing up the security uh, at, the, at, the, um, at the Capitol building. And I want them to follow the information, follow the facts. Now, that'll be anybody who's had anything to say about the January 6th uh, insurrection. I call it, you know, a terrorist attack on on our country, Um, including people in Congress, people in the administration, the former administration, and people who were actually engaged in the insurrection, who were who were participating, for what reason? I want to know what motivated all this. How did it come together? How was it financed? Mm -hmm. How did people end up in the same hotels? Mm -hmm. How did people come down on buses and planes and trains together? Things of that nature. Those questions need to be asked, Zelina, because we've got to make sure that nothing like this ever happens in this country again. This was an assault upon our country, our democracy. It was dangerous. They were out of control emotionally and physically. And had they um, confronted any member of Congress, that member would have been in serious, dangerous conditions. 